Hey everyone, Icarus here, with an analysis of the 1.8 Overwatch PTR patch. As most of you are probably already aware, a new patch has been pushed to the PTR with a ton of changes, and while everyone, myself included, is hyped up for the custom server browser and all of the cool stuff that comes with that, there's also been a fair amount of big balance changes, including some buffs to heroes who have been underplayed for a while now, some more nerfs to some of the meta dominators, some quality of life changes, and a huge rework to Bastion. So without further ado, let's get into things. Before I get into the main meat of this patch, I'm just first going to discuss the impact of the numerous quality of life changes present in this patch. Just about every hero with an auto-target ability like Mercy's Beams, and Yada's Orbs, Anna's Nano Boost, etc. has gotten a change to the sensitivity of these abilities. What this means is that you can change how the targeting works to make it so that you have to be more accurate with your targeting to the point where you pretty much have to be mousing over the hero for the targeting ability to come up. This is a pretty small change in the grand scheme of the meta, but it's also important because certain heroes who really rely on their targeted abilities hitting the right hero, like Ana's Nano Boost and Mercy's Jump, now have more reliability in it hitting the hero they want. While the change is small overall, it does add consistency to these heroes, and we're probably going to see a lot less boostio at the high level. Onto the more important changes of the patch, we have a giant rework to Bastion. His configuration sentry deploy time has been decreased from 1.5 seconds to 1 second, bullet spread for that form has been increased by 50%, bullet spread is always at maximum, it no longer increases as the weapon is fired, magazine size has been increased from 200 to 300, headshot damage multiplier has been removed, and it no longer deals critical damage. His configuration recon's bullet spread has been decreased by 25%, magazine size increased from 20 to 25, his self-repair can now be used while moving, it is now bound to secondary fire, formerly ability 2, no longer interrupted by taking damage, and a new resource meter has been added that depletes while self-repair is active and recharges when not in use. His configuration tank form no longer grants bonus armor, but he has a new passive, Ironclad. Bastion takes 35% less damage while in sentry or tank configuration. These are a lot of changes and some really powerful ones too, which isn't surprising considering Bastion has gone pretty much unplayed since people started playing the game competitively, even after the rework he received at the start of the second beta phase. First, let's look at the changes to his sentry form. Essentially what these changes do is make his sentry form a lot less strong, with the higher spread and the lower damage since you can no longer headshot. This hurts Bastion a fair amount by itself, considering that most of the time he was seeing play was for surprise picks on the final point protected by a Reinhardt when the enemy team only had about a minute left, so they couldn't adjust team composition to deal with the massive damage Bastion's sentry form could bring. With sentry form nerfed, this pocket strategy is hit pretty hard. Bastion can no longer deal reliable enough damage with the spread while in sentry form to make the risk of switching team composition for this already rare strategy worth it. He still does really high damage, probably the highest in the game, but at the high level he would absolutely melt people with those headshots, so losing the ability to get them really hurts. But this doesn't really matter when you consider the changes to recon. Essentially what the changes to his recon form do is bring him up to par with Soldier 76 on the damage front. Both of them do 20 damage a bullet, and both of them have 25 bullets. However, Bastion's maximum spread is much lower and it takes a lot longer for him to hit that maximum spread. This makes Bastion a really reliable DPS hero, able to do more consistent damage than Soldier 76 with little to no spread control. At medium ranges, this is huge, because Bastion's natural spread that he has, something 76 doesn't, won't really make an impact and will be able to fire pretty much a non-stop stream of bullets since it takes so long for this spread to come into play. On top of all of this, Bastion has 100 armor while in his recon form, giving him a total health pool of 300, 100 more than Soldier 76, with 100 of it being armor that gives him a much higher effective health, so not only is he doing really good damage, but he also has more health to make up for his lack of mobility with Sprint, and just make him stronger in a fight in general. All of this is a pretty big deal, especially when you consider the current competitive meta where Soldier 76 dominates as the top DPS pick, with Genji and Tracer the next highest below 50%. There is huge space for another strong DPS hero to enter the meta, and since Bastion's new recon mode rework puts him on par and in many cases even better than Soldier 76 in the damage front, we could see him join 76 at the top of the meta or even outright replace him. Reliable hitscan is extremely important in competitive Overwatch due to it being the most reliable damage and one of the few ways to really deal with an ultra mobile hero like Tracer or Genji, so another option for that at such a high power level would almost definitely see play. The only real question is if Bastion would see play alongside Soldier 76, or just outright replace him. 
In the past, we've seen only really one hitscan hero on top, but at the same time, either McCree or Soldier have just been too weak in comparison to the other. With this Bastion buff, we could see two hitscan heroes at the top of the meta, or one or the other dominate. Either way, this change alone is enough for Bastion to see at least some situational play. But the changes to self-repair really make it much more likely he'll be dominant. When I mention strong heroes, one of the topics I cover a lot is reliability. Having a self-heal adds a ton onto reliability because it allows a hero to heal himself while a single target healer heals a lower health hero, preventing them from entering risky health pools as often. With the self-heal now being usable while moving and no longer interrupted while taking damage, Bastion gains a lot more reliability and also makes himself even more competitive with Soldier. Soldier has to remain in his heal and it's slower at the benefit of being able to shoot while in it and that it's AoE. Bastion not being able to shoot hurts him a fair amount since it's pretty important as far as DPS heroes go, but the faster rate of healing and completely unrestricted movement should make up for that since he'll be at high health quicker or be able to retreat while healing back to a support or tank to save their life. Pull this on top of the armor pool that Bastion has as well, and he is extremely survivable and self-sustaining, making him a really good, reliable DPS hero. Onto the changes to his ultimate, while the removal to the extra 150 armor he got while in tank form hurts, it really doesn't matter due to the 35% damage resistance he now has in both tank form and sentry form on top of the base armor he normally has. This makes him really hard to kill for all heroes now, and even harder for the close range burst damage heroes like Reaper and Genji who have to deal with the damage reduction and the 100 base armor he has. Tank form is already considered one of the best ultimates in the game due to the missiles doing 205 damage on a direct hit and the massive splash damage they do allowing Bastion to quickly burst down a group of heroes or instantly kill a support with a well aimed shot. On top of that, it can also get over Reinhardt's shield because it has some of the best rocket jumping in the game, something made even better by the damage reduction. Bastion's ultimate was well regarded as one of the best parts of his kit and one of the best ultimates in general, but unfortunately was on a hero with a bad base kit. So threatening was it that when activated it he became priority number one and would get focused down. The damage reduction nullifies a lot of the problems Bastion would have with getting focused down while in tank form and makes the already strong ultimate even better. On top of all of this, Ana, one of the most used heroes in the game right now, combos really well with Bastion's ultimate with her nano boost. Not only that, but the damage reduction stacks additively instead of multiplicatively, meaning Bastion has an insane 85% damage reduction while nano boosted now. This is so much that he can survive the full brunt of a rocket barrage for his ultimate with about 30 health left. With how prevalent Ana is in the meta and the already insane strength of the combo with Bastion doing 307 damage a shot under the effects of nano boost, it would not be surprising to see this become the new Beyblade combo. Overall, these insane reworks to Bastion look to make him a meta mainstay. What made him weak was his sheer inconsistency. You would trade off the highest damage in the game for the weakness of having to stay in place making you an easy target. While this led to strength in certain pocket strategies, it meant that he was pretty weak if the strategy failed, and just about useless on certain maps or without a risky strategy built specifically around him. But with these new changes, he's now able to do the same DPS and in some cases better DPS than Soldier 76 while also having some really strong combos with existing meta heroes and the meta being in the form it is to give him a good spot. His sentry form almost isn't even necessary, but the faster transformation time giving the ability to use it on the fly more often could lead to it still being used from time to time when it could really work. It's pretty likely that Bastion becomes a mainstay of the meta, playing both offense and defense in the DPS role due to his hit scan strength, focusing mainly on the the recon form but occasionally switching to the sentry form when the situation is right for it. Then when he gets his ultimate comboing it with Ana for a near unkillable ultra high damage powerhouse. Bastion is shaping up to be a great hero after this rework and he's definitely going to have a spot in the meta. Onto Diva now, we have a pretty minor bug fix that's still kind of important to her defense matrix. Projectiles like Roadhog's Chain Hook or Chase's Pulse Bomb no longer need to travel a minimum distance before they can be blocked. While well, this was an issue from time to time, Diva's nerf has already made her from made her leave from the meta at less than a 20% pick rate now, and having a little bit more reliability on her defense matrix isn't really going to solve that. If teams wanted a hero that can more reliably save people, they would pick Zarya, who's already dominant in the meta. Her low health pool and damage now make Diva much too weak of a pick to see much play at all, and this change to her defense matrix to make it slightly more reliable is nowhere near enough to fix that. Next up, we have a small change to May's cryo freeze. May can now be targeted by allies while in cryo freeze. 
Well, this change is pretty minor, it's still kind of important in some situations. Specifically, Mercy and the other heroes who rely on targeting for their heals can now heal a Mei who's in Cryo Freeze, allowing her to leave it sooner and healing her up faster. Zarya can bubble her for when she's about to leave to potentially save her or catch enemies off guard when they try to go for the quick kill on her. Overall, pretty minor stuff, but it does give a few cool situations where you can see some good combo play. Nothing that's going to see Mei climb back from a less than 5% pick rate she's been seeing recently, but some situations where she's going to be slightly stronger nevertheless. If Mei sees a return to the meta at some point, this will come into play, especially since there's pretty much always been a hero with a targeted ability in the meta at some point. Onto Mercy now, we're finally seeing a much needed buff to her to her Resurrect. While performing a Resurrection, Mercy now becomes temporarily invulnerable along with her, the allies being revived. One of the biggest problems Mercy has had has been that when she needs to go for a Resurrect, she basically has to hide and then sacrifice herself to resummon her team, basically making the fight 5v6 and much more difficult in exchange for a chance at trying it again. With this invulnerability, while she still has to hide to get off a successful ultimate, the team is no longer pretty much guaranteed to continue the fight without their Mercy. Now the fight is going to be properly reset, with Mercy able to not instantly die. Unfortunately, this is unlikely to actually bring Mercy back into the meta. Currently, the top support duo is still Ana and Lucio, and while this change is good and helps one of the big problems of Mercy, it doesn't fix the fact that she basically has to hide when the fight starts if she wants to use her ultimate, making the fight more difficult in the first place, or the, uh, that Ana can still outheal her while having the option to do really good damage. Ana is still just way better than Mercy, and Lucio is just necessary since he's the only AoE healer and only hero with speed boosts in the game, so Mercy really doesn't have any spots in the meta to fit in. On top of this, Zenyatta has been seeing play levels above 20% lately, showing that he's already in that more situational support role, so Mercy really doesn't have anywhere to enter the meta, and even though this change will help her, it won't help her enough to compete with the current top supports. Next up, we have a very small change to Torbjorn's Ribbit Gun. Ammo is now loaded earlier in the reload animation. This change is pretty irrelevant in most situations, but there are a few it's okay in. Basically, when Torbjorn gets stunned while reloading or otherwise interrupts his reload, he's now more likely to have reloaded a lot of his ammo. A pretty minor change, but there are some niche situations where it's going to help, but it's pretty much relevant and won't affect how much Torbjorn is played at all. As well as the initial changes, there was also a post by Jeff Goodman recently that included a couple more changes to Roadhog and Winston. Starting off with the Roadhog change, his scrap gun's spread has been decreased by 20%, chain hook targets are now pulled to a location 3.5 meters away, up from 2 meters, and the cooldown for chain hook has been increased from 6 to 8. Overall, this looks to be a nerf to Roadhog with a bread and butter pickoff potential with his hook nerfed, but in some ways, it's also a buff. After his nerf, Roadhog was still pretty popular in the meta, albeit lessened at a pick rate in the 20-50% pick range rather than a 50% pick rate, but he was still seeing a fair amount of play and the hook was in many cases even better than it was before. Or sometimes he would see it snap off and the Roadhog lose a kill because of it, most of the time people would still be pull getting pulled in reliably right for Roadhog to kill, whereas in the past they would be dropped too, f too far away, or to the side, or behind him. With the nerf to the pull range, you would expect it to put things overall back to where it was before, as far as the strength of his hook goes, maybe even a little bit lower, but surprisingly it's not too much of an issue because you can close the gap just by walking forward. What it does do is make it so that without walking forward, Roadhog can't follow up with a melee attack or kill some heroes with extra small hitboxes, but all of this can be fixed by just walking forwards and closing that distance. So overall, the nerf to the hook distance ends up having an impact in some situations, but can be pretty easily nullified, making it kind of irrelevant. The cooldown nerf hurts quite a bit, meaning that Roadhog will be able to go fishing a lot less often, but with how often and easy it had been for him to get kills, it's a kind of necessary nerf and doesn't gut him, more tones him back to a more fair level. There will be a lot of situations where those extra 2 seconds are going to make a big difference, but the main strength of getting a pickoff at the start of the fight to then snowball into a win is still there even if it will take a little bit longer. The nerf hurts, but not too much. As far as the scrap gun change goes, it's a pretty big deal. Roadhog's spread is now about on par to Reaper's spread, and in the midst of a fight, he's going to be able to do a lot more reliable damage. Roadhog's giant spread was one of his weaknesses, since he would have difficulty finding kills on smaller heroes without his hook or anywhere but close range. Now he's much more reliable in close range and can actually do decent damage in that dead zone between his alternate fire and his primary fire that he used to struggle with. Overall, while this initially appears as a nerf, the main nerf component can be made up for pretty easily and overall it ends up as a bit of a buff, especially in combat when Hog doesn't have his hook. 
Finally, we have the change to Winston, reducing his critical hit volume by 15%. What this basically means is the size of Winston's head hitbox has been reduced. This is pretty interesting, especially considering Winston really didn't have the biggest head hitbox in the first place, but against the close range shotgun heroes who really destroy him, the size of his head hitbox did come to play. It was above the normal heroes and most of the other tanks like Roadhog, Zarya, and Winston, so when a shot shotgun hero got into close range of him, they could find headshots on him pretty easily. With the size of his head hitbox reduced, it should help him a lot against those closer range heroes. It will also help him quite a bit against the more long range hit scan heroes since they will now have a harder time shooting him out of the sky as he jumps away or in, since they won't be able to hit his head as easily. Overall, it's pretty tough to call if this buff is actually going to matter or not, but it does give Winston a tiny bit more survivability, something that he's been lacking. He's already played a fair amount in the competitive scene, and with this change, we could see him a, see a little more play since he's a bit more survivable. Patch 1.8 looks to be bringing a lot of changes, both to the game as a whole and to the heroes in it, but a lot of them don't really seem like they're going to have much of an impact, between either not doing enough to fix the hero's problems or making them a substitution to a hero in a similar role, while some heroes like Mercy and Diva who have been hurting receive some buffs, they just weren't big enough. But at the same time, a long underplayed hero Bastion has received an insane buff that will likely make him one of the top meta heroes, filling up that DPS spot on both offense and defense. As well as that, Roadhog seems to have gotten an overall buff to make him a little more popular, and the same goes for Winston. Overall, it doesn't really seem like the meta is going to shift much with already popular heroes getting slightly stronger and Bastion looking to most likely replace Soldier 76 as the top hitscan DPS, but otherwise, few changes. We could see the meta slow down and shift from a dive comp to a more teamfight based one if Bastion and Soldier 76 end up getting run alongside each other, but currently it's looking like a dive comp will stay with Bastion rotating in. With that, I hope you found this patch analysis useful and enjoyed the video. If you did, please do leave a like, and if you have any questions or want to add to the discussion, be sure to leave them in the comments below. To keep track of what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter at IcarusGamers, and to catch the next video, be sure to subscribe. With all of that, I've been Icarus, and I'll see you in the next one.